app. Let's get over to our man, Mr. Steve Rhodes, as we do each and every Monday at 20 past the hour. And don't forget, folks, Steve has an outstanding program here at TFN, 11 to 12 Eastern Standard Time, and also a great newsletter, Mastering Probability. Now, it's very easy to get Steve's newsletter, folks. Come over to our website at TFNN. You go to newsletters. You're going to see it. Hit newsletter button. It's going to be right on the right-hand side, Master and Probability. You can get his newsletter for one month for $149. You get it for six months for $695, which is a savings of $199 or 22%. And you get it for a full year for $1195, which is a savings of $593 or 33%. Now, they all come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, okay? So the bottom line is that you can come over and say, okay, I want six months. See if it works. On the 28th day, if it doesn't work for you some reason, just tell us you want your money back. No problem. Steve has a huge amount of archives out there, the different tools that he uses. You know, it's a nice value deal, folks. Steve Rhodes, what's going on? Well, baseball still next October 23rd. <laughs> <laughs> Reggie yeah. Jackson. Here we go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Mr. Exactly. October. That's a long time ago, folks, but he was <laughs> Mr. October. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, it was. But it, it's still, I mean, there's going to be a couple of great games on tonight. You know, I, I, I'm, not a, I'm not a baseball fan big time during the year. I'll go maybe catch a game or two. But during the, you know, the, the playoffs, World Series. It makes everything. a difference. That's right. It, it, it does. But it's a small marketplace this year. Beginning Two teams in Texas. Okay. So they got that local market, right? Yeah. So it doesn't really expand out. You know, you got that. You got Philly. And so it should be a good game uh, tonight. Uh, the, uh, the, the Texas games have been great. Um, you know, so I'm, so I'm looking forward to that. But it's still hard to believe. It's October 23rd. We're still playing baseball out there. I know. Especially because yeah. we like hockey so much. <laughs> That's right. Exactly. 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 So what I what I thought today we would do, okay. and, and we're going to touch on some of the stuff that, that you've already talked about, but I just wanted to give you and the folks that are listening and watching, you know, what I'm keeping my eye on. So the first thing is, as you say, it's all about the dollar, king dollar. So let's start here. I know you've already talked about it, but I'll give you a different, a slightly different take on it, or at least levels for us to watch. And that is that if we, this is my U.S. dollar index dollar chart, we can see that since the bottom, bottom back here in July, what I have on here, folks, the tools that you're looking at on this chart are just TAS market profiles. And what the market profiles do, the bottom of a profile tells us where buyers reside. The top is where the sellers are at. And the center is where both buyers and sellers believe there's fair value with inside that range. Now, in this case here, what's really cool is that each of the pullbacks, and you were talking about some of the pullbacks out there, each of the pullbacks here have found support at the bottom of their daily profile. Um, this first one was back in the August time frame. So this is the green arrows that we're taking a look at. Talk about waking up and looking out over the cliff, maybe jumping over the uh, creek out here. So we have that same situation that has occurred here in the U.S. dollar index, but each time that price is tested where the buyers are at, the bottom of the profile, prices held. Now, I do have a road momentum indicator top that's in place out here. So in order for the U.S. dollar index to really tell us that it's breaking out, we need to see a close above 107.05. But right now, today, a close below 105.57 is going to signal to you and I a change in trend. So a little bit different methodology than what you use out here, but just another confirmation. Uh, you and I, we don't talk about this stuff beforehand, and we don't talk about, uh, so, but we're both coming up with really the same conclusion. So the figure to watch today, folks, is 105.57. Now, I've got a, a really faint yellow line going across where we have other prior swing points. So really, that's kind of like the last bastion of hope. We get below those, then it's just confirming this change in trend signal that we're taking a look at. Now, as we've discussed, as you've discussed before with everybody, a change in the dollar, meaning that's going to head lower, should put strength. Here we take a look at silver. So this is a three-day cor uh, uh, correlation chart. So this gives us the directional correlation. So at the top, I've got silver. The center is the U.S. dollar index. And what's below it is the correlation. Now I'm using here the, the tightest correlation I can, which is a three-day average. When the bars are at the bottom of the uh, uh, of the zero line, below zero, folks, what that's telling us is there's an inverse relationship. So as Tom would say, the dollar is going higher, metals would be going lower. The dollar is going lower, metals are going higher out there. So you can see that it's a pretty darn good coral, uh, pretty good inverse relationship between these two. If we take a look at gold, it really says about the same thing. In fact, I'd say gold's correlation, they're both about the same. I'd say gold's is a little bit more more favorable, a little bit uh, more consistent with regard to that inverse relationship. So now we've got that data to look at. 
Last Friday, the interesting thing here is last Friday, gold formed a TD9 count top. You mentioned some of the tools that come with folks that subscribe to my newsletter service or the, or the current subscribers out there. And this is really, this is a great tool for everybody to understand and learn. So we had a confirmed TD9 count top in gold last Friday. By the way, the bottom that formed in gold back here, that was a TD9 count pattern as well. So what this tells us is that in order for gold to tell us that it's going to move up to the higher level, and the higher level that I've got is 2084, we need to see a close above 2,920. A close above that will negate that signal. And then where I'm coming up with that 2084 level, Tom, is that would be the weekly TD9 count breakdown resistance level. So how I determine where a breakout occurs or the breakdown occurs is using this TD9 count system. Yes. Now, the cool thing about gold for its weekly time frame, and you'll love this, you know this, it formed a Gartley buy pattern on a weekly basis, which is not easy to do. I, I haven't spent the time to go back and take a look at the weekly charts on uh, gold or silver, but there's not a ton of weekly Gartley buy patterns. And that's what we've got here. It's above resistance as we speak. Resistance for gold uh, using the TAS marker profiles would be up at 1964. Now, if we take a look at uh, silver, last week on Friday, just by a smidgen, Gold, silver negated its TD9 count top. All it needed to do was close about 2349, which it did on Friday. However, in order for silver to really tell you and I that it's breaking out, I need to see a close above 2392. If we get a close above that, then 2522 is into play. These green lines here, these are where I have it that uh, the instrument broke down. And we'll take a look at the daily time frame. The GDX, so put it all together, the GDX completed a TD9 count top last Thursday. And what price should do is it should pull back to target its oscillator and change line right around 2250. I'm sorry, right around 2854 out here. However, a close above 3007 is going to negate that top and it's going to tell us we're going to move up to its next breakdown area, which would be 3175. So what I'm providing for folks out here are the numbers to be watching either to the upside or to the downside. The ES mini's inverse relationship to the dollar, not as strong if we take a look at that bottom panel. It's there, but we can see that it's starting to wane a bit out here as of the last, um, it's really since about February. So it's not as strong as that relationship between gold and silver. This is the NQ's relationship up at the top here is the NQ. Again, the bottom is the uh, is the correlation. So a review of the daily equity futures contract. I've got bottoms for the ES, the NQ, and the Dow, the YM out there. For the example, on the ES, we've got to buy the D point pattern. The only way that gets negated is a close below 42.3550. The NQ, it's got a TD9 count bottom. The only way that gets negated is a close below 14.586. The Russell to the Dow also has a buy the D point pattern. That needs a close below 33. 021. And even though you can't really see it out here necessarily, there's wave sevens, part of the Basil Chapman uh, uh, Chapman wave count out there. And all this needs is a higher low in order to confirm a bottom. So what have we learned? The U.S. dollar index, if it closed below 105.57 today, it's going to suggest we got a change in trend. Both gold and silver have got that strong relationship. Um, a uh, close above 20, 2009, 20 in gold is going to negate that sell signal and suggest that we head up to the 2084 level. I like it, man. Nice breakdown, Steve Rhodes. No Thank doubt you, about Tom. it, man. Thank you. You have a great week, a safe week, and of course, we look forward to the show tomorrow morning. You bet. And here's my 30 year treasury. And on Thursday last week, yep. it formed a Rhodes Mintum indicator, but on Friday it did. Wow. That's, headed up, that's headed up to 113. It's a beautiful man. thing. You bet. Take care. <laughs> Stay right there, folks. Come right back. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 